Okay, hi everyone. So I am Hannah Whelan, um, double Olympian, and now uh, assistant head coach at Warrington Gymnastics Club. My first question is, what is your what is your favourite piece of gymnastics equipment and why? So I would have to say that my favourite piece to compete was the floor because I loved doing the kind of dance element. It was almost like a performance. I could show a little bit of my personality with it. So I really liked performing on the floor. But I actually preferred to train on beam. Um, I was just very focused. I used to have a, a beam in the gym that I used to love and always want to be on. Um, so I just used to kind of just get my head down and, and work really hard and used to find that find that quite, um, I got a real sense of achievement after my beam sessions. So I used to like training on the beam. Um, how did you get into gymnastics? Um, well, my I have an older brother and an older sister. Um, and they were both swimming. So my mum and dad took them to swimming lessons. And I then joined when I was probably about five or six. And I was swimming around in circles, not doing very well. Um, I then taught myself kind of how to do a few gymnastic skills at home. I was cartwheeling around Tesco and um, begged my mum to take me to a gymnastics class. And it kind of went from there. What was it like being in the Olympics? Um, incredible, there's one word. Um, overwhelming, I think it would be another word. I was, I was young, especially in Beijing. I was only 16, so there was a lot to take in at a young age. It was um, but a, just an incredible experience that from, from just getting the, a kit to flying out there with the team, being in the Athletes' Village, competing in an arena with thousands and thousands of people watching, to the, the media around it, that was obviously a very new aspect for me, having so much media attention with it being an Olympic game. So doing interviews and stuff like that was all very exciting. Um, yeah, and then just the meeting loads of new people as well from different countries and different sports. So just lots and lots of different different uh, words I'd say to describe how just amazing it was. Um, how old are you? I'm 29 now. I work at Warrington Gymnastics Club now with my sister and my mum also works there too. <laughs> Keeping it in the family, I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Ben, you're up next. Thank you, Ella. Would you rather live in a snowy mountain for the rest of your life or a dark cave for the rest of your life? Oh my goodness. I think I would say a snowy mountain. As long as I had a big coat. It would, at least it would be kind of, you'd be able to see a bit of light. It wouldn't be too dark all the time. As long as I was warm enough, I think a snowy mountain. <laughs> when you like make a mistake in like a big competition, in that moment, what do you do to like refocus yourself back on your routine? Because obviously it'll be quite, you'll want to just grieve out the mistake, but you have to keep going. What do you do? Yeah, of course. Great question. Um, I would say... In my head, it's more of a, you've got to carry on because every point from now counts. So you know that it's very normal and natural for a human to make mistakes, we're not robots. So you kind of have to really push that mistake to the back of your head and be able to carry on your routine without le letting it then affect. Because there are times, especially when I was younger and I was learning how to compete, that I would probably let that one mistake then turn into two, three, four, five mistakes. So obviously it took a lot of experience and a lot of time to learn how to push it to the back of my mind. And I could be annoyed about it as soon as I'd finished that routine. But we also practiced that in the gym as well. So in our training sessions, we would do practice competitions. And if, if we did fall, we would practice that getting back onto the equipment and learning how to finish off strong and not let it affect um, the rest of the routine. But it's, it's definitely easier said than done for sure. Especially when you, you work for so hard for something, if you make mistakes, it's, it's a tough one, but it's it's great to have that, um, to be able to be so resilient because it's actually taught me a lot for the rest of my life as well in other aspects of my life. So it's a, it's been a, a very good lesson for me to learn when I was younger. Thank you very much. And the next one is, I live, I know you live in Stockport. Yes. And I live very near Stockport. My dad lived in Stockport as a child and my grandparents still live in Stockport. Wow. So I support a very important team. Now I want to see if you support them. Do you support Stockport County FC? 
I'm gonna say yes I do because I'm from Stockport and my grandparents are from Stockport I actually um I've actually walked around the ground before and um yeah I went in I don't know where I think I had a hospitality thing where I met some of the some of the managers so yes I am how many hours do you play in each week eat how many hours okay so probably at my peak so when I was training the most up to big competitions so Olympics Commonwealth Games I was doing roughly 32 hours a week so it was nearly a full-time job as well as doing my all of my education as well so it was busy 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 weeks for me <laughs> did you ever have any injuries I did I had a few injuries um I'm very lucky to say I've never broken a bone before which I think is quite rare for gymnasts or athletes um but I had kind of growing uh injuries when I was younger I've also had a bit of back pain I had an operation on my wrist so where the cartilage which is like a sponge that sits between your bones that kind of went away it kind of wore away for me so my bones were rubbing together so I had to have an operation for that so that was probably my worst injury you trained so hard on it um were you able to have some fun times as well oh thank you uh, yeah I did train hard but I definitely definitely had some fun times I think it's all about balance and the reason that I was able to work so hard is because I was also having fun at the same time you know the um relationships that I built with my teammates because we were spending so much time together we would have sleepovers we would go on trips out you know traveling abroad to competitions was so much fun as well um and I had a great group of school friends as well that understood all my commitments so um yeah I did have lots of fun is it scary to perform in front of a crowd it, it is actually I'm, I'm not going to say no it, it is scary and it's nerve-wracking but if you're confident in yourself, and which I was, I'd go out there and knew that I could hit my routines. And the more you do it as well, the more experience you get, the less scary it was. But it was more like a, an excited, nervous feeling. because It was an incredible experience to be able to compete in front of a big audience, you know, in, a, in an arena. So, yes, it was scary, but it was also very exciting. <laughs> That's what we always say, don't we, mini reporters, that you've got to... Um, do something scary but the more you do it and the more confident you get so when we're interviewing people it might feel a bit scary at first but then the more we do it the better everybody feels about it in every area it's great and your last question Halima which was your favorite country to perform in oh I think I would have to say probably the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow um, so we were up on floor last, so it was my favourite piece and we'd done really well and I was feeling amazing and just I gave that floor routine my all and we ended up coming away with a gold medal. So that was um, that was a special, special moment. How do you deal with the pressure of being famous? Oh, wow. I think that because it's come from a sport and it's come from me doing something that I love, I want to be able to give back to people because I know what it was like when I was a young gymnast and I was looking up to the gymnasts that were older than me and they were the famous ones and they were the ones that I kind of aspired to be like so if I can inspire just one young gymnast and um, that's kind of my motivation for you know posting things on social media or anything like that if I can promote positivity and hard work and how amazing gymnastics is then I I kind of don't try not to see it as fame. I try to see it as being a, a good role model more so than that. Can you describe how you felt when you won your first medal? Ooh, my first, I'd say my first big medal. Um, I think I was just very proud. I, I was always quite, um, wasn't very vocal with my goals. I was kind of keep them in and what I wouldn't necessarily say, like, I want to go to the Olympics. I, I knew I did. But um, so when I won my first medal, I kind of it made me realise, actually, you're quite good at this. And it gave me a lot of self-confidence moving forwards. How do you motivate yourself? For example, on a day when you do, when you really don't want to train, what did you do when you had a bad day training? Nothing worked. You were not good at all. And you try and try, but you just can't succeed. 
That's a great question. And I think everybody's going to have those days. And even now I'm not training anymore. I think I still have those days sometimes. Um, but I definitely remember why I started. So sometimes I'd think, you know, why am I doing this? I don't want to do it anymore. It's too hard. I can't do it. Um, but then I'd remember why I started, um, which was, you know, a, a very young six or seven year old Hannah who loved the sport of gymnastics and loved being with her friends and loved flipping around the gym and had like bundles of energy and who the further she progressed wanted to succeed and wanted to achieve as much as she possibly could and I didn't want to throw away all the hard work that I'd done but I also learned a lot on the people around me so my, my family my, my mom my, my sisters you know they they really really helped me on days where I was feeling down just either for a hug or for me to just rant at and moan at they were always there for me um so I think it's really important to surround yourself with people who are gonna just sit and listen and be there for you and, and just be able to talk to it's really important thank you great advice thank you very much when did you realize you wanted to be a gymnast um well my mum actually did was a gymnast when she was younger but to a much um lower level she just did a, an hour or two a week I think and um, she hadn't really suggested it to any of us until I kind of watched it on the TV um, and I taught myself how to do some skills and I just knew that I wanted to go to gymnastics and learn more skills um, and I started in like, like a school hall um, so it wasn't until a couple of months after that when I went to a, a you know purpose-built facility that I realized that that's what I wanted to do and I wanted to carry on carry on with my gymnastics. Um, who inspired you and why? Great question. Um, I'd say my parents inspired me. Uh, they were always so supportive and always pushing me to be the best, but making sure that I was happy um, and enjoying what I was doing and making sure that I was grounded and wasn't getting too big for my, too big for my boots. Um, but, but most importantly, they, they were a massive support to me and you know, driving me to gym and back and making sure I was fed and watered and had all the equipment that I needed. And they um, they work very hard at what they do, nothing to do with gymnastics. Well, my dad's nothing to do with gymnastics, but they work very hard at what they do. So they've always inspired me to have a good work ethic. What was your favourite performance? Ooh, good question. I have lots of different ones for different reasons. Um performing at an Olympic Games, especially in London in front of a home crowd, I'll never forget. Um, but I think my best competition was probably uh, in Tokyo at a World Championships where I came ninth. Um, and I just had a, a cracking competition all, all around and I just felt felt very confident. So I'd say that one maybe is a good, a good one. <laughs> and this one is um, like a random one. That's okay. Um, if you were a sweet, which would you be and why? Oh, great question. Oh, gosh, I'm gonna have to think about that one. That was a sweet. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna just think of my feet very quickly here. I might change my mind. But you know, I have like a Haribo egg, because it's got two different parts to it. So it's not all just kind of one flavor. It's got, you know, like two personalities. I can be fun, Hannah, and I can also be serious. Hannah, so I'm going to kind of go with that one. And I also like the taste of them, so. <laughs> Would you be a billionaire or a model? Oh, goodness me. Um, I'd probably go with billionaire because I could give a lot of money to charity, but also go on quite a few holidays. How many times have you performed in front of many people? Oh, goodness me. Um, so let's count them up. Two Olympic Games, one Commonwealth Games. How many World Championships did I do? Um, 2011, 13, 14, three World Championships and the European Youth Olympics and about three Europeans. So roughly 10. So, that, so that's a lot. That's yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. <laughs> when you put it that way. <laughs> the 
Did you have fun when you were doing gymnastics? I did. I really did have fun. I enjoyed it, especially when I was younger. Um, it was it was a little bit less intense, and it was um, you know, I was still le- learning new things. Uh, as it got old, as I got older, it did become more of a job than um, a hobby because I was doing it so often, and it was it was more of a career. Um, so it wasn't it was fun still but not always fun whereas when I was younger it was I I definitely enjoyed it a little bit more but it got a little bit harder as my body got a bit older (laughs) yeah because when you're like um, mid um um 50s you like kind of struggle a little bit yeah I think because that's when you're starting to get older yeah. He's not 50 yet. <laughs> it's not yet. Yeah, I know, but I, I know, but when you're 50, mid 50s, you might start to feel like I can't do this. Oh, gosh. I'm a, yeah. lot, so, um, I'm a lot closer to that, Joshua. So, so my- <laughs> I'm hoping I still feel okay then. <laughs> Who is your hero and why? There was lots, there was lots of gymnasts that I think inspired me. Um, um but I'd probably say my hero is my mum a bit cheesy I know but she really she really was because she just she was there for everything and uh she, you know I wouldn't I wouldn't have been I wouldn't have achieved what I did without her without her support without her time without her love um you know I wouldn't I wouldn't be where I was or the person I am today without her so she's definitely my hero if you had a superpower what would it be and why oh that's a great one um I've always loved to be able to fly I mean obviously being a gymnast I'd kind of could fly so I'd like to stick with that theme but actually be able to properly fly I would say so if you jumped you would just go over the roof yeah I just fly I just glide in the air for a little while (laughs) what inspired you and why um, I was with when I was training I was obviously in a group with a lot of other girls who were similar age to me and also training towards the same competition so we were all doing similar things so we really kind of pushed and helped each other you know if someone was brave enough to try a new skill it would challenge us to try a new skill and if and if one of us was struggling we'd all come together and try and help and support each other so I think when we were in the training sessions it was my teammates that that, that kind of helped me the most. How did you keep going when you felt down? Yeah, similar to the other one. I'd remember remember why I remember why I did it, but also just kind of recognize that, you know, I wasn't a robot and I'm still not a robot. And, you know, I'm human and it's very, very normal to feel down. It's very, very normal to wake up and not feel motivated. You don't have to be motivated all the time. It's it's a very natural human thing. So just recognizing that actually I'm allowed to have a bad day and tomorrow is a new day. What first got you started? Uh, yeah, I think just my love of throwing myself around. I was a bit of a daredevil. So I think <laughs> I just loved trying to do gymnastics, even though I hadn't been taught how to do it yet. Uh, I had a lot of energy. So I think that's what got me started. Would you rather have the same dream playing in your head every night or have the same song stuck in your head every night? And for me, this song actually has quite a bit of a story like and it's question has a bit of a storyline so yeah what's your answer oh can it be any dream in any song of your choice yeah see I love music but if a song's overplayed I do get really sick of it so I think I'm gonna go with the same dream 